Hello there shed dwellers and railway folk. Welcome back to another long overdue Shedmouth Junction. Okay, hello everybody and welcome back. It's actually quite cold in the shed tonight, I can't deny it, but it's lovely to be back in your company once again. It's been way too long, hasn't it, eh? Way too long. Mind you, for some of you, you might be thinking it hasn't been long enough. Um, okay, this is the fourth time I've recorded this. Fourth time. <laughs> it hasn't gone very well the first three. I'm clearly out of practice. But for tonight, I have some help in the form of Wingman IPA. It's happening. A little bit of the old brew dog, and I'm pretty sure this time it'll be good. Okay. So to start with, I would just like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has continued to support us, even though we've been really lazy and haven't put out any content. Uh, no, I haven't been lazy. I've got to be honest with you, it's not laziness. It's been <laughs> sheer busyness. As you all know, new job started. I just do not have the time anymore to come out here and do stuff. It has been a real bugbear of mine that I haven't been out here doing things. And I really, really want to. I really, really do. But I'm starting work an hour earlier and I'm finishing work an hour later. So just don't, by the time I get in here, I'm shattered. The brain's gone to sleep. Nine out of ten times I get home, um, I know, I, I debrief my day with, uh, with the um, powers that be indoors, you know, the head command. And before I know about it, I'm asleep on the sofa, covered in dribble. Uh, I wake up about midnight, one o'clock in the morning. You know, got dribble down here, bits of biscuit over here, tea down here somewhere and on the sofa. It's been really, really hard to, to find time to come out here. But that said, I had a week off a couple of weeks ago. It gave me a chance to reset. My first week off since Easter, a well overdue holiday. And it's given me a chance to reset and find my feet again and start to enjoy my hobby once more. So it's really, really good to be back again. And thank you so much for your continued support, like I say. Uh, I haven't answered a lot of your comments and things on videos that I have done or in the past. just haven't literally had... I haven't had the time, but the, the mental capacity to deal with anything, it's, it's been the weirdest sensation. I never had a job where I felt so insecure and felt so burdened with it after work. I come home from work, I don't switch off, I'm still thinking about work, you know. It's really, really weird. But let's not talk about work too much. I want to get on with, with what we're here for, model railways. Okay, model railways, let's start off with model railways. What has been happening in, in the shed when I do get out here? Um, it's mainly been focused around TT, so let's have a look at that, shall we? Uh, as you guys know, as soon as TT120 was revealed to us a couple of years back, we knew instantly that it was the kind of thing to razzle-dazzle my Phantasmagazzle, and it really... Uh, I'm so enthusiastic about it. It's unbelievable. And for those of you guys who've been hiding underneath a rock, if you want to find out a bit more about TT120, head over to channels like Peachy TT120 or Mac Trains. Those guys are really clued up on it and know exactly what they're talking about. I just bimble along and do what I normally do and, and just enjoy the locos and, and what we've got. Um, but I've been promising you for ages a shelf with two different scales on. And finally, it's taken me, what, a year? <laughs> but finally, we've got both scales running side by side on the shelf. And I'm really proud of it. I really, really love it. I love double O, as you know. I love all scales of modeling, but I love double O. And I love TT. There's nothing I don't like about it. Um, it's got niggles, but everything's got niggles at some point. The only niggle I can find with TT, and I'm sure it's not even a problem with TT. It's not, I know, in fact, I know it's not a problem with TT. It's a problem with the way the track is laid. Let me show you. Okay, so my baseboards what I tried to do my double O is laid on the wood of the shelf with no uh, cork or anything between that and the wood and it runs really quietly you know the trains going around now you get a little hum in the background you can hear the joints in the track clickety clack clickety clack and it sounds it sounds lovely and it's quite relaxing you sit out here listen to that and it sounds fantastic for the TT I chose to mount it on some insulation board Here's some I had earlier. Um, I've got tons of this stuff. Uh, it's given to me a little while ago. I've got loads left over. So anyone local wants any, tap me up and I'll, I'll you can have it. I'm not going to use all of that sort of stuff. I've got loads of it in the in the thing out there. Um, 
but I used that as my baseboard to raise it up slightly higher than the double O gauge okay the reason I've raised it up is to try and create mainly on the back shelf not the one in front of me because this one's wider up than the front one trying to create uh, a sense of perspective the double O larger in the foreground and and TT smaller in the distance so it gives a bit of a, a, a depth if you like that's my that's my plan and I think I've kind of created that fairly fairly well okay uh, and I'm really pleased with that um, I forgot where I was going with this oh yeah, yeah and so laying the track down I thought I could tack it in place but then I thought no it's only on foam it's not going to stay there I thought I could glue it in place I could do absolutely fine but then I thought okay put a layer of cork down between the track and the uh, and the foam just to raise the track up slightly <clears throat> so I've done that exact thing insulation board take the foil bit off and then slap that on top of there a little bit of glue a bit of the old um, PVA stick it down and then of course the track on top of that glued in position with the same PVA okay and it worked a treat it has worked brilliantly well the trains go really really well and it's worked fantastic the downside um, this is the problem I've come across be interesting to know if any other TT modelers have found this or if it's just the fact I've been using glue on top of this on top of that have a listen okay see if you can spot when I start the TT train running hang on hear that quite loud it's really noisy and I'm confident it's just where like I say it's everything's glued and it, it obviously the glue goes hard and it creates a hard surface and I don't know if it's the wheels they use on the TT or whatever but it's quite noisy and um, it's kind of I'm gonna say it's off-putting it's not at all but it kind of uh, I'm happy that I haven't gone down the route of DCC or HM7000 using sound on the locos. I want my trains to be relaxing and the sound of double O mates going around now, I can just about hear it. It sounds nice, sounds railway like almost. That just sounds like a racket. <laughs> you know? So if I had the nice sound of the double O going around, the racket of that thing plus loco noises buzzing off in here and I'd go mad with the noise levels. But as it is, if I run the train nice and slowly, it's nowhere near as loud. I run that quite quickly then to demonstrate the sound differences. But no, actually, if I run it nice and slowly, the pace I normally would do, it isn't too bad. Okay, but it'd be interesting to know if, if Greg or, or, you know, Chris of PGTT is, has had that as well. Okay, if anyone's noticed it, just, just let me know. If there's anything I can do to lessen the noise, also let me know. Uh, if it means taking the track up again and relaying it, that ain't happening. I can keep it as noisy. Okay, so there you go oh, look. Do you know what I'm not much of an alcohol drinker but this stuff is lovely oh that's good I'm not much of an alcohol kind of guy but yeah mm, have some of that so okay so apart from laying the track um, I came across no problems at all apart from the lift out section with the double O gauge I did create a lift out section it can be removed at any point uh, and lining the double O track up isn't too sad. The, the way I've made my lift out section, I can move it in any direction. So as the shed expands in the heat and contracts in the winter time, the tracks will slightly move because the shelf is clearly mounted to the walls. But the way I designed my lift out section, I can move that around to, to get it bang in line. My thoughts were with double O one side, TT at the back, trying to line up both tracks as the wood moves and the shelves move because they inevitably do move it can be more difficult so I thought do I attempt this or not I've decided not to I've basically laid the TT track across the whole door so it, I can't remove that section anymore one reason was because I didn't think they line up very easily and secondly I quite I quite enjoy watching my friend Darren come around on a Wednesday and hit his head on the on the lift out section that sounds cruel doesn't it but he does he comes around, he's been coming here for years or since i've had the shed built uh, regularly on a wednesday and he, 
<laughs> probably four out of five times he smacks his head on the lift out section and that is properly that's properly stuck down there now that's probably bolted in position and it's a proper weapon if i doesn't get a concussion but i quite enjoy watching him stand there and swear so i decided it's going to stay there if he can't read the sign that says you know mind your head it's it's, it's you know it's my entertainment um but yeah so that's that i haven't done that i haven't taken it out lift that i haven't <laughs> start again <laughs> I, i've kept i've nailed it in, oh sod it right <laughs> Um, but yeah, on the subject of TT, I have, I do have some other locos, uh, apart from William Whitelaw, which comes in the in the set. I do have other locos which I have purchased um, before I changed my job. Nothing special. I mean, there isn't huge amounts to show you that you couldn't have already seen before on other channels. But um, I've got the. Uh, I'll show. You, I'll show you another day. I'll show you another day. Um, in terms of the foam board, this bit here, I'm trying to create it. I'm trying to make it look like it's rock faces around the shed okay now the way I've done that is using the foam and a knife I've just basically cut into it and I made little details try to make it look like a cutting okay and now I'm at the point where I'm thinking I've just got to shape a few more bits and pieces and then I can start painting it and get the base color down not quite sure whether to go uh, traditional like grey rocks or to do a bit more of a doorlish uh, seafront with a bit orangey in there as well not quite so sure no, answers on a postcard what do you think let me know but I kind of thought by putting the paint straight onto the foam the foam would just absorb all that paint so I thought I know I'll put something over the top of that layer it so it creates a, a nice outer layer to paint a surface to you know um, I thought about using plaster sheets, but it's quite thick. And I didn't want to lose the detail that I've already got in the rocks I've cut. But it looks quite realistic, I think. So what I've done, I've got a bit of tissue paper. I've dunked it in some PVA and water mix and laid one sheath, <laughs> sheath of, <laughs> of paper over the rock surfaces. See what you think. What do you think of this? Look, this is my practice session. So you can see from here, I've actually cut all the little the little bits into the rocks, okay? I didn't want to lose that detail. And so all I've done then literally is, is put this sheet of papier um, over the edge of that. And it's created, I think, quite a nice looking rock face, okay? And that can go in the corners and that sort of thing, you know? But I think painting onto that rather than straight onto the foam might be a bit better. But time will tell. I will let you know how I get on with my experimental sessions. The other thing I tried was a bit more um, hit and hope really. The same tissue paper dunked in PVA glue and water mix, it was slapped on the front of the old uh, polystyrene and then banged around with a knife to make some rock looking patterns. So that's these there. Okay. So yeah, that's again looks quite nice. I quite like that. So I might do a little mixture of both both methods. Okay. Um, I put some pictures on Instagram. And someone said, can you do a tutorial? I thought, yeah, I can do. Uh, happy to do that. No problem at all. So if you want to see that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. No problem at all. Um, so really on TT, that's really where I've got to. You know, I've got some new locos I can show you next time round. Um, started working on the scenery, which I'm, I'm so pleased about. The track's all down. It's all running. And I'm all happy days. In terms of double O, not a lot's changed there. I do have a couple new locos to show you. I've got a really nice one to show you, actually. But I'll do that again another day because I'm aware that time's ticking on already and you're already going to start getting bored. Um, yeah, so that's really where that is. The main layout behind me, as you can see, is currently taken up with motorcycle. That's another story. I'll get into that right now. But the, the main layout will happen at some point, as you guys know. The biggest thing now is do I... I'm going to hold fire on that because although I love Double O, it's beautiful. And I love TT. I'm struggling to know which way to go and it all depends on what models they bring out in TT as to whether I can model what I want to model with the locos that they've got so I'm gonna hang fire in the roundabout way TT be better so I can squeeze more in okay to the shed uh, but double O currently is where all the locos that I need are so I've got to wait and see what happens there okay we'll see what happens with that we'll watch that for the future give me another 10 years and I might have got something sorted out okay Okay, so the next question I keep getting asked is where the hell is Evie Grace? Where is she? Where is my little daughter? 
Well, ladies and gentle folk, I have to say, it's not all sad news, but it's a little bit sad news. As you know, I've loved having Evie on the channel with me. She is my absolute world. She really, really is. And you know that. You guys know that already. I have to say that she's getting older. <laughs> she's growing up. And um, she's become a little lady. She really has. She started high school and she's become a little lady. And, and uh, I'm so proud of her. She works so hard at school. Her grades are flying through. She's 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 done so well with her little self and I'm so proud of her um, but yeah she's got to a point now where you know perhaps making stuff out here in the shed with me making pigs and sheep and that sort of stuff it's fun while it lasted but uh, I think she'll appear on the odd video or two but I think the days of her coming out here and doing stuff like we used to I'm afraid I think they're coming to a bit of an end it's no longer that cool and all of a sudden being up in her bedroom with her mates doing face packs and stuff with makeup and that jazz has now come to the fore and it's it's perfect and normal stuff and i totally understand it i'm just very grateful for the time that i've had with her in here doing this hobby um i'm so grateful for you guys for being so supportive of us as we were doing it okay it's been wonderful a uh, wonderful time and i've genuinely hand on heart it's been a wonderful experience and thank you thank you so much and thank you so much it really gave her a boost of confidence uh, and, it, and, yeah, and she's growing into a, a to be a wonderful young human being so thank you very much for that but yes you might not quite see us so much on the channel you're gonna have to put up with this grumpy bearded bloke i'm afraid to say you know face like a slap bum as far as it goes now that's it ready lot that's it downhill from now on in something else to tell you about something else i've got to, sh to share with you on my week off last week uh, I, I, living in where I do quite often we get rail tours go hacking through sandwich and I always miss it because I'm always at work <laughs> uh, it's always on a Tuesday or a Thursday you get the odd Wednesday but it's very very rare and having my first week off of the year I did have a quick sneaky peek and I've read that um, clan line was coming towards sandwich and out towards Dover Priory I kind of thought you know what and I give us a go um, I'm going to try and find the loco. I've never done it before. I've never gone on the train to chase a train. So I was on my own, nothing else to do. I got to Sandwich Station. While I was there, the rail treatment train went through. My God, that thing was moving. Uh, it was so quick going through the station. But it, it was pretty impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, and a nice little addition to the day's excitement. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, hopped on the train to uh, from Sandwich to Dover Priory. Haven't been to Dover Priory since the late 90s. I used to go to college. Uh, I had dreams of being an architect. Oh, I was, wasn't brainy enough. I was dead thick. And so, um, but I did a couple of years at Construction College, and uh, I used to go through Dover Priory to go to Folkestone. And I couldn't drive back then. I only had a motorcycle license. And in thicker winter and snow, it wasn't much fun. So I'd catch the train to Folkestone. So it's seven pound fifty return back then and that was probably the late 90s seven pound 50 return so much to Folkestone and uh, I think now it goes what it would cost I tried to think it's about sort of 15 20 quid I guess I don't know either way I digress uh, went on to uh, Dover Priory and got talking to some really nice chaps on the platform who were clearly waiting for the same thing as what I was turns out we was on the wrong platform <laughs> so we stood there on platform two thinking we've got like four minutes left before clan lines due in and with that uh, a high-speed train rolled into the platform so and uh, clan lines coming on platform one so our view is going to be slightly um interrupted so uh, you've never seen three chaps run so fast straight up the steps across the bridge down the other side and literally we got down the bottom just as, as the loco was coming into the station talk about cutting it fine but yeah yeah once it arrived it was oh, phenomenal um, a full rake of Pullmans and, and, a, and, a, and a 67 at the back. It was just an uh, amazing sight. It's so highly polished. It looked lovely. They yeah, stayed on the platform for a good half an hour while they put um, they gave it some water and a uh, photograph opportunity for the uh, people on the tour. Once we all went back into the carriages and the coach and stuff, we just had our, uh, us enthusiasts had a chance to get the photographs and, and, and watch it pull away. And what a stunning loco. What a stunning loco. And it's something that I 
I don't get the same feeling with diesel engines. I love, I don't mind diesels. I've got nothing against diesels whatsoever. When you watch a steam loco in, in motion, you can physically see the power. You can see this thing is actually alive. And it's, yeah, it's awesome to watch. And watching it pull away, I was, ah, it gets, it's even a bit emotional. Is that the right word for it? It's like, you get really misty eyed over it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not old enough to remember Steam in its day, you know. But I would love to have been around when Steam was in its heyday. Oh my God, yeah, it's just proper right up my street. And that'd be my ideal job one day. I would love to be involved in restoration or anything along them kind of lines. Uh, I think if I could have my time again, I'd, I'd learn engineering skills and even be like a boilersmith or something. I think that'd be an amazing job. Uh, just, just restoring locomotives and that sort of thing I think it'd be fantastic and uh, yeah how things would be different if I could have my time again I would nowhere near retail I'd be doing something completely different either way yeah so an amazing experience uh, only let down slightly by the fact my return train was cancelled so I had to get uh, a taxi back which proved it to be a very expensive day <laughs> but there you go that's another story that's another story yes I think we covered everything there I think we've covered what I've got up to with TT um, uh, double O, nothing's happened really. I've had a nice day out at the station watching some locomotives. Work's really busy, so I haven't got time to fart. And I think that's pretty much it. Just, I'd say, um, apologies again for my lack of communication with everybody. I have been trying to keep as much uh, up to date as possible with everyone's channels. I have been watching content um, usually quite late at night. You know, when you kind of you laid on the sofa and you're dropping off a little bit, you put on a bit of YouTube and uh, you have a little listen to what's going on in the world but it's like i say my brain's been totally focused on work i just haven't had any inclination to do anything um almost become a bit hermitized which isn't good for the brain it's not good for your mind you, you, you know i'm very lucky to have some very good friends who come around regularly and, and kick me up the bum and make sure i'm, I'm all right but uh, it's, it's it's good uh, to have them around but yeah otherwise i would probably sink into a pit of, of doom and, and depression i reckon but there we go um, oh, one other thing to mention, um, I'm selling a locomotive on behalf of my brother. Um, before I put it on eBay, is there anybody out there who may be interested? It is a beautiful um, Class A1 uh, Peppercorn Loco. Uh, where are we? It is uh, Curlew, if that's how you pronounce it. A Class A1 BR Express Blue Early Emblem, part number 32561. It is a lovely, lovely locomotive. Um, my brother does have quite an extensive collection. He doesn't have a railway, but he does have a good collection. Um, I think in time he'll get his own little railway, but at the moment he's just he's just having a thinning out session, trying to get rid of some stuff. Uh, and this locus has come up. It runs beautifully in both directions. Uh, I think it's quite common with these that um, in reverse on tight curves, it's not overly happy, but don't run it in reverse on tight curves. Uh, other than that, it's absolutely fine. Runs beautifully backs and forwards. There's no damage to it from what I can see he is looking around about 125 pounds for it I think it's an absolute bargain but you know if anyone's out there who's interested in it just let me know okay if I don't hear anything in a couple of days I will back it on the old flea bay okay um, but yeah apart from that I think we're kind of done I will keep you up to date what's happening I promise I'll make more of an effort and get out here more often I'm really relit the fire now to get out here and do more stuff okay i'm really i'm really keen to get on and get the scenic work done on my little shelf i'm actually really proud of it does it show i'm really proud of my little my little shelf i love tt i'm loving that it's oh it's brilliant anyway okay so what's coming in the future um scenic work on here and next time around i'll show you some of the new locos that i have purchased okay um and on that note i'm gonna love you and leave you thank you very much again for watching and i'll see you all on the next one. Take care everyone. Bye bye.